everyone and welcome back to Pipes Tobacco and Whiskey. Uh, today we are going to be doing our top five which was a recommendation by one of our subscribers to uh, give a list of our top five favorite tobaccos. Uh, unfortunately because of COVID-19 not everybody could be here with us today. Uh, we did get their lists from them, Ian and Colton, but uh, unfortunately they were not able to make it due to the uh, shelter in home law that's going on right now. So it's just me and dad today. Uh, we will be giving you their numbers, but couldn't really give you as much as their interpretations as to why on some of them. So other than that, I think we should start this off. Uh, we're gonna start from five to one. And I think there were a couple that we really enjoyed, we wanted to put on our top five list, but we just felt like there were some other tobaccos that shined more than them. So uh, they're gonna be on, uh, we'll mention them to you guys so you, so you all know. Uh, I wanna go ahead and start by saying this was a hard one for me. Yeah, I had, I had troubles narrowing it down to five. Mm -hmm. um, and when I did narrow it down to five, I found that maybe the next day or the next week, there was a different one that yep. popped in, you know. So uh, this is a this is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not uh, solid from week to week for me. So this week, this is my favorite five. Now yeah. I can tell you that of these five, um, maybe one or two of them will get bumped in and out. But I've got. Uh, about three of them that are solid. Yeah, I'm me. about the same way. There's, a, you know, one might go down, one might come back on the list. Yeah. It, it just, and and the other thing that really made it hard for me, we started looking at this list, at least I did. I don't remember when the comment went, but I think it was around February, early February, when we all started thinking about this. And down here in Texas, uh, earlier in February, it was a little colder. So some of these tobaccos were, at the time, way more appealing than they are now when we're dealing with 70 to 70 80 degree days yeah that's a good point that you know the the temperature does have mm -hmm. an effect on on what your choices to yeah. smoke are. sometimes yeah. in the colder days i like a thicker smoke and when yeah. it comes to the to the earlier summer days you know i really enjoy just a lighter smoke something that still tastes well yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and kick this off by saying that my number five pick is by Cornell and Deal, and it's something that we've tried before. Um, it's Autumn Evening. And I just got to say, to add to it, the one reason I really like it is it's just there's nothing like pancakes and a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, that that particular choice, it's an aromatic, but it's a Virginia Ford mm -hmm. aromatic. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a kind of a no-nonsense nope. uh, blend. It really does taste pretty good yep um I, I i i liked it when we smoked it uh -huh. uh, back in i think it was in october november something uh -huh. like that uh -huh. yeah that's a good one that's a good one i really well, like that one that one is also colton's number five number as well five as yeah well. colton picked that as well as his number five he's been growing into a virginia lover too though in his own right it's like he he has some virginias that he just really enjoys the no nonsense smoke yeah yeah, I, I just, it's its a very good tobacco for me, and Ooh. I think, heck yeah. What was Ian's number five? Ian's number five was, uh, was something I'm smoking right now, uh, Rat Tray's Bad Piper's Dream. Uh, he's, he's kind of an aromatic smoker, too, and for something that's a little more, I think that one is a little more Virginia forward, but we'll talk more about it, because I think that's on all of ours. Well, lists. that one is my number five. That's your number five that's, as well. That's my number five, too. <laughs> The Bagpiper's Dream Rat Trays, when you can find it, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, that's you know, it's, a good, it's a good one to have. Uh, it is also a Virginia forward um, aromatic, and it's uh, flavored with some type of orange liqueur or a brandy. It's or got something. something. Like, yeah, it's really orange nice. Orange brandy or something like that. But um, it does have some black Cavendish in it, and uh, but mostly Virginia's. Uh, and that was not my number five. And, and I, you know... I've not been smoking that for very long. I think I've been smoking it now for maybe six, seven, eight months. That, I think like all that. of us have been. Ever since we first did the try on it, when we did the review episode on that, that's when we all started smoking it. And I'll tell you, at the first instance, all of us were kind of like, mm, 
but now it's grown on every one of us and I can th- I think I can almost say that it's on every one of our top five lists you know there was a I was I was at uh, pipe world in Austin sitting in their in their lounge smoking a pipe and I was wanting something a little different and an elderly gentleman came in um, that suggested this one to me yeah and so I bought it and tried it and since then it's been in my rotation so Thank you guys at Pipe World for, for helping me find this yeah, one. This is a very good blend, and all of us are very happy to have it in our rotations. Yep, yep. All right, so are we at number, number four Number four. Let's go ahead and start with you this time. Okay. My number four is one that's that just came out not too long ago uh, for Seattle Pipe Club, and mm-hmm. it's called Wild Man. I've tried that one. And the reason why I like Wild Man is because, to me, it's a really well-balanced... I'm an English lover, and it's a really well-balanced English. It's got a little bit of that smokiness from the lats. It's got a little bit of tanginess from the Orientals. It's got a little bit of a spice to it as well. Yep. Uh, And the Virginias kind of sweeten it up a little bit. To me, it's it's just a really well-balanced... English blend mm-hmm. that, I, that I go to quite a bit. So Wild Man is my number four. Well, wow, that's pretty good. What about Colton? Colton's number four is Virginia Number One by McBaron. Okay, that's one that we did try. I don't think I was present for that review, but you know that one is just a, it's a no nonsense. Yeah, uh, Virginia. There's nothing. No fluff. There's nothing else to it. It is a straight Virginia, um, and it's just very. Uh, it's got a sweetness to it. Uh, and it's just very easy to smoke. So another Virginia for Colton. Huh? Yep, yep. <laughs> That's my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian chose one that is interesting. This is one that I wanted to put on my list, but there were some reasons why I didn't want to put it on my list. Ian's number four pick is by Cornell and Deal, and it is Visions of Celeface. Hmm. This one, guys, is a very tasty aromatic blend from Visions of Cellophase. When you open the tin, it kind of smells like pineapple and coconut. It's 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 really interesting and it tastes as interesting as it as it smells. You know, they've we, got some cigar leaf in there too, which is what we makes picked it up that like. cuz we smelt it mm-hmm. at the uh, Texas Pipe Show back there was in a, October. Yeah, there was a gentleman, it's the same story like you with the Pipe Worlds and uh, Bagpiper's Dream. I was sitting at that table and I was like, I just want a good aromatic. Something that's really interesting that isn't going to burn or overheat my pipe. And uh, the guy said, try this one. And there's no Cavendish in it. It's just the cigar leaf that adds it in there. Huh. And that's why it tastes so interesting. And man, we all tried it. We all liked it. The one reason it's not on my list, though, but Ian likes it, is I really feel like it goes to pipe. Oh, yeah. It goes to pipe like crazy. And that's the only reason it's not on my list is because once I smoke it in a pipe, that pipe is now dedicated to Visions of Cellophase. You know, I I smoked it in one of my cobs, Mm -hmm. and it took me almost two months to get that taste out of of my pipe. I still have a cob sitting there because the last thing I smoked in it was Visions of Cellophase, and I'm just too scared to put anything else in it. Yeah, well, uh, that one didn't make my list. No, no, it was pretty good. Now, me for number four is one that... I have only recently tried in my aspire towards getting an aromatic that isn't black Cavendish heavy. And this one is by Cornell and Deal as well, and it's called the Gentleman Caller. And the reason I like this one so much is because, once again, Cornell and Deal is trying to give you an aromatic without any Cavendish in it. Uh, This time they use deer tongue. In the tobacco. Oh, that's the one you let me try with the deer tongue. Okay. Yes. And right. that one, the reason it's on my list is because it is a very f- Virginia forward tobacco with that slight, slight hint of deer tongue. It's very what sweet. What does the deer tongue taste like? Sweet. It's like a vanilla? Or yes. It's- yes. It's a very vanilla kind of cinnamony flavor. Oh. And it's it's just, it's in, in my quest to find an aromatic that isn't an aromatic. You know, that's, well, is it's classified as one, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one I found, and I only recently started smoking it about a month and a half ago. 
and it was so good to me that I moved it onto my top five list uh, here pretty soon if I keep smoking it through another year you know it might end up higher on my top list because I think it's just a great all year round smoke cool easy to get too all right going on to number three um, which <laughs> I think a lot of us have this one on our list and I think it's safe to say that since it is one of the best tobaccos in the world, it is Seattle Pipe Club's Plum Pudding. That's your number three? That's my number three. Uh, it's Ian's as well. And the only thing I can say about it really is it's just a damn good smoke. Even if you're not a fan of that family of tobacco, it's still just a good smoke. I would say that that's a Latakia forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a little bit of, of Virginia, got a little bit of Perique in it. Um, I think it might have some Black Cavendish in it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's got Orientals in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm going to talk about that one because mm -hmm. that's that's on my list too. Yeah. Well, what about you? Well, Colton's number three. Uh, okay, yeah. Colton's number three is Costello's Sea Rock. Interesting. Yeah. He that and that was one. That he started smoke when he started smoking a pipe. I bought him that tin because he wanted an aromatic, and so I bought him that tin of Sea Rock, and that's just been one he he goes to a lot. It's hard for him to get uh, mm -hmm. there where he lives, uh, and, and, and you know he has to order it online. But uh, but that's that's his number three. He likes that a lot. Very Matter of fact, today's his birthday, and. Uh, he asked me to get him some for his birthday, so I, I bought him some of that for his birthday. Very nice, very nice. Well, that's cool. Now, my number three is what I'm smoking right now. Uh-huh. A great everyday smoke. It's tried and true. It is consistent. Uh, I've, or, I've been ordering this for years now, Yeah. and it tastes exactly the same today as it did when I first tried it, and that's Peter Stokeby's. English Oriental Supreme. Yep. And the reason why I like that so much is because it is Oriental forward. You yeah. get that tanginess and that little bit of hint of spice this, from this. the Orientals. It's got a little bit of Latakia, a little bit of Virginia in it. Um, and they all blend very well together. But it is just a really great tasting smoke for me. And it, like I said, it's it's always consistent. I know what I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, I can put it in any of my pipes. And it smokes exactly the way I expect it to. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that and that's my and that's my everyday smoke. I will smoke that one once, at least once, every single day. Wow. Yeah. So that one's a pretty good one. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of it on hand. Yeah. <laughs> that's I would say that it would be the same for me with my plum pudding, except Plum Pudding's got a limit. Almost every website I go to, it's got a limit on how much you can buy from that website, and then its price tag is a little up there. So yeah, when you start getting into those tins like that, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to pay more. But obviously, there's a reason why mm -hmm. they're on so many people's lists. Yeah, and so Absolutely. you know, you know, they're going to. It's 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 about the demand you know if a, if a tobacco is is very popular that price is going to shoot up that's yep. the way the way it works so anyway yeah that that uh, so yours was plum pudding number three uh, me and ian both were plum pudding on number three and mine was this this english oriental another thing that that i like why this made my list this english oriental is because the price tag is perfect it comes in bulk it's mm. the only way you can get it and um I mean, it's like two dollars and eighty cents an ounce. An ounce, yeah. You can't beat that. Oh my goodness! I bought a pa a pound of it a week ago, <laughs> and I think I spent thirty something dollars. Yeah, for a pound you of it. Can't, you, know? you can't beat that. That is an amazing price. For and me. there's there's a couple of other Stokebys that that I'm going to do honorable mentions about. Oh yeah. Yeah, but but uh, that this one is on my my rotation. Well, before we get to that, let's go ahead and hit our number two. Okay. Which is, uh, what's what's your number two? Okay, for me, my number two is something that was introduced to me uh, probably about a year ago. Someone on one of my Facebook groups, uh, maybe Old Codgers uh, group, suggested that I try this one because of the other things that I was already smoking. And um, it's, it's made... Uh, quite of an impression on me, and so this is Seattle Pipe Club's 
Mississippi River. Oh, yeah. Mississippi River is an English blend, but it is a very, very Virginia-forward English blend. And it's got uh, lots of red Virginias in it. And I love that tangy, vinegary Mm -hmm. uh, smell and taste that you get from those red Red Virginias. Virginias. Yeah. And so I, I really enjoy that. Now... It, although it is number two on my list, uh, it is so rich and so uh, thick tasting that I don't smoke it all the time. You know, yeah. I'm, I may smoke it two or three times a week. Yeah. You know, but uh, it it just has such a great flavor profile that it's my number two. Wow. And Colton's number two. Is plum pudding. So Colton moved it up the list. Right, he moved it up to number two. Uh, so he he's a uh, a Seattle Pipe Club plum pudding lover as well. Right, see, it's just one of those tobaccos that we're probably going to hear it a couple more times before we close this episode. Oh yeah. Uh, Ian's <clears throat> number two, and this is where Ian starts getting into what we know Ian to be as <laughs> an aromatic lover. Uh, Ian's number two is. By the Country Squire, Second Breakfast. Oh, okay, out of their out of their their uh, Hobbit series. Middle Earth, the Middle Earth, the Middle Earth, Middle Earth series. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that is one of his favorites. Now, for the longest time, I used to smoke out of their Middle Earth series. Another one, which is an honorable mention for me, so we'll mention that one in that section that we're going to do. But you know, uh, John David at the Country Squire. Just, I mean, there's. I've tried a lot of tobaccos from from Country Squire, mm-hmm. and all of them are just really tasty blends. Yeah. Um, the thing with Country Squire is that they are a little more expensive, mm-hmm. but they're hand blended tobaccos. They're they're quality tobaccos. Um, you know, the solid stuff. Uh, one of theirs is, is one on my honorable mention. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but just a the, just a really, really solid selection of tobaccos that they've got over there. My number two is the one that I am currently smoking right now, which was Ian's fifth best pick, which is Rat Trey's Bagpiper's Dream. When you can get it, it has got to be one of the best Virginia Ford smokes I've had. There's only one other one that I can put ahead of it, and that's my number one. Uh huh. Well, bagpipers, you know, like we said, is is just got a really interesting flavor profile. It's it is. unique. Yeah. I haven't tried anything uh, like it. Uh, availability is a problem with that one, mm-hmm. but when you can get your hands on it, it's worth worth uh, every cent that you spend. Absolutely, and, and the can is just so cool looking too. Yeah, the tin that it comes in. It, is yeah, the tin so is cool. is one of those plaid. You know, yeah, like a Scottish those, plaid. Those tartan, yeah, colors. Yeah. Man, it's so cool. Um, so, before we get into our number one picks, we do have some tobaccos that we want to talk about. Uh, ones that didn't make our list, but we would be remiss to not mention because they're just really good tobaccos that we enjoy on a regular basis as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mention Ian's, which is a new one for him and one proud point for you on him. It is Kramer's Father Dempsey. Nice. Nice. That's a good full-bodied English yep. blend. Yeah. He just he he liked it so much that he felt it was worth mentioning because he is an aromatic smoker that really enjoys this English blend. And I think that is something that should be mentioned, and that's why he mentioned it as an honorary mention. Cool. He's he, he's true to his word. He loves aromatics, so there most of his list is comprised of it. But he wanted to say, I like this one a lot. Well, good. Do you have uh, so you've been talking about some of your honorable mentions? Well, uh, Colton didn't give me any of his honorable mentions, but I will uh, say on mine, um, one that that I've been smoking for several years now, uh, the Country Squire. Mm-hmm. Is Cherokee. Uh, Cherokee is is an aromatic. I don't smoke aromatics that much, but when I want that that you know that sweetness from mm-hmm. an aromatic, I go to Cherokee. Um, again, very consistent. Um, it tastes exactly the same now as it, as it did when yeah. I first started. Um, it's an all day smoke. It's a smoke. good smoke. You yeah. can smoke that sucker all the time, 
uh, never really gets bitter on you. It just it burns well. It's just a good, good, solid tobacco. Yeah. So that's one of my honorary mentions. My I, one that I struggled to to uh, put not put on my list was an, another honorable mention for me. Is Seattle Pipe Clubs. Have you noticed that there's a lot? Of yeah. Se- yeah, a lot of Seattle Pipe Club is one of my favorite favorite tobaccos all all around tobaccos. Well, but- and they and they've made it onto every one of our lists. There's been one blend that's on every one of our lists. Yeah, I think I think it's a great it's a great company to yeah. buy from. Well, you know, Sutliff makes their tobaccos, mm-hmm. but Joe Lankford is the is the blender that that comes up with these recipes, and uh, he just. He's just doing something special out there, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, my other honorable mention is Hood Canal. Yeah. Which I was told if you like plum pudding, you'll like Hood Canal. And so Hood Canal is a not as as strong of a Latakia blend as plum pudding is, uh-huh. but it still has those fa- flavor profiles in there that match uh, plum pudding. Oh. Um, the the only reason why I didn't put it in my top five was because it's a little spicier mm-hmm. than what I will typically uh, smoke. But when I want that spiciness, that's what you go. I to. go to the Hood Canal. Oh, yeah. cool! I had two honorable mentions. Um, one was by the Country Squire from their Middle Earth series. Uh, this one is called Bag End. Oh, yeah. That's a good Scottish oh, blend. Oh, it's a good Scottish blend. I mean, and I, I'm not sure what an Irish aromatic is, but that's categorized um, as an additive to soften the Scottish kind of flavors that are in it, oh. and uh, at least in their description of it. And, uh, man, it is, it is good. It's very Virginia heavy. Very, it's a little bit of Latakia in there. It is good. Just a good smoke. I smoked that one for about seven months straight. <laughs> it's just, after a while, I started leaning more on some of my other stuff. My other honorable mention, I don't smoke a lot of now. I, I, I just, I don't find myself, it's an aromatic. Uh, but when I first started smoking, I smoked this for about three or four years every day. And it was any of the Seven Seas blends from McBaron. They have the original, Royal, Black, Red. All can be buy, bought in tens or bulk. And very great price. Very easy to get. Uh, fantastic aromatic when you smoke it right. And I smoked that for about three or four years straight when which, I first started Which smoking. one did you smoke? The one I preferred was the Royal. It was a little heavier than the natural aromatic, but um, any one of them were fantastic smokes. They all start with the same Seven Seas base, and then the Royal has either more Virginia in it, or the Red has more, you know, Red Virginias in it. The Black has a little more uh, Black Cavendish in it, and so that's why they're named separately on that you know the royal all of them have a little more of the same components in it but the seven seas base is all of theirs that's what they all start with and it's just it was a really good one so now it's time for our number one picks um this one was hard for me this one was very hard for me uh just because There were so many other great tobaccos, but everybody on this channel who's been watching us probably already knows where my number one pick is going, uh, probably already knows which one it is. So as to no surprise, it is Cornell and Deal's Virginia Gentleman. That one is, it's just straight Virginia. It's incredibly smooth. It's a medium hit, medium bodied smoke with a little bit of Turkish in there just fantastic that is my number one pick the only one i've given a five on a full review of and that one 10 10 or bulk you can get it well in and that's the great thing about what we do as pipe smokers 
is that everyone's palate is different. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many options out there for people to choose from. And once you lock into one, mm -hmm. it's just a great feeling, you know, just a, a great feeling to know that you have one that you can just count on mm -hmm. and you smoke it consistently and it's 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 yours it's you know? my smoke yep. it's the ribbon cut on it is thin enough to not be considered a shag but to know that once i get a good light on it i'm not relighting that puppy i'm just smoking and enjoying it all day long and it comes perfect i just can't talk any more greatness about it. Well, you're obviously a, a, a Virginia lover. So. Yeah, I think I only have one thing on here that isn't Virginia-based, which is plum pudding. <laughs> Every other one of the, on my list is a Virginia style of tobacco that I just love. Uh, Ian's number one is one of your honorable mentions. Oh? The Country Squires Cherokee. It's his favorite. It's it's a great tobacco. I, I can't tell you. There was a time... Uh, when I, that's all I smoked mm -hmm. was Cherokee. And that's, that's where he got it from was when he really started getting into pipe tobacco. That's what he said. The, the last time me and him talked about the list, the, uh, he said, you know, dad used to smoke it all the time. I loved the way it smelled. So I started smoking pipe tobaccos and that was the first pipe I had ever loaded was Cherokee. He said, and ever since then I have just been smoking it. He sent me a picture of his quarantine, which was, uh, of his stuff, which was three bottles of Jim Beam and a pound and a half bag of Cherokee. And he was, he said, I'm set. And that's it. That's all I need. No food or no, anything No, no like food. It. You know, typical 21-year-old kid. That, you got to get the priorities straight. That's funny. The Taco Bell's drive through still open is what he said. So he's got the other things he needs. God. But that's what he to got. To be 21 again. <laughs> yeah, man. I know. Totally. It's single, no kids. Yeah. Well, Colton's number one was Virginia Gentleman. Ah. Is that a C and D? That is C and D, yeah. and it is mine yeah. too. Uh, that's that's what he likes, and uh, I guess you kind of turned him on. To that, I did. Yeah. I did. It was it was our review, uh, and he he still does it every time he comes and visit us. He'll. St Deal about an ounce or two <laughs> of my Virginia gentleman because he knows I have a full shelf of it full at home in in tins and jars and bags so that I always have enough to travel with me. I've probably lost as much Virginia gentleman as I've bought because <laughs> I have so much of it. I just enjoy the heck out of that smoke and it looks like Colton does too. Yep, that's his favorite. Now my number one is I've been smoking this for a long time. And it's Seattle Pipe Club uh, plum pudding. And now, I love all of the plum puddings. I like yeah. the regular plum pudding. I like the bourbon barrel. The reserve. But the special reserve is my absolute favorite. Mm. The special reserve, it's it's a little more mellowed mm -hmm. than, than the regular plum pudding. So those Latakias don't come out at quite as much. What do they do differently? Do they age it or something? I think the tobaccos are more aged, but it where where the plum pudding is sliced in, you know, eighth inch or half, you know, eighth inch uh, slices. Yeah. The um, the reserve. the reserve is in a plug. Oh. So what what you're getting is, and this has been used up a little bit. But you're getting a huge chunk of tobacco that's been pressed and aged. And see, I've been leaning towards some of those more recently in my spring and summer feels is big cake plug type tobaccos. I have a bunch of them. Now, now I, I'll tell you that for f these come in four ounces, t four ounce mm -hmm. tins. And for four ounces, you're spending $33 for it. It's, mm. it's a little more expensive, uh, but... It's worth it. Golly, it's worth it. And and um, the I've had this. It is so rich that you really can't smoke it all the time, every day. But um, every time you do, it's oh, just golly. Every time every time I fill a bowl of it, I, I'm just I'm just pleased. And I've got quite a bit of this cellaring right now. Too. Yeah. So so this is this is my absolute favorite. Plum pudding, special reserve. So me and Colton went a different way than uh, 
me, Colton, and Ian all went a different way, and that just goes to show how your taste buds develop as you get older. You smoke more, you smoke your third pick more often than your first or second pick. Right. Yep. And it's because you, your first and second picks are a turn off the lights, turn on the TV, sit down with a beer, enjoy my smoke. That's right. Whereas all three of us are a shit, we smoke this every day. <laughs> 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 this is our smoke. This is it. And so I guess that's that's probably where it develops differently uh, as as you mature and your palate will change. So I guess that's a testament to it right yeah. there is I smoke this rarely, but man. Yeah, I would say I smoke this probably once a week. Once a week. Um, and usually it's when the day is done. And I'm ready to just kind of get ready for bed, you know. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'll uh, maybe towards the end of the week too. Yeah, like on a Friday. On night. a Friday night. Yeah. Oh man. Just kind of just kind of cut off a little bit of that off the plug and yep. rub it out, put it in the bowl, and just relax for the weekend. Wow. So that was that was a good good list from all of us, and we had a couple that were the same as you can tell. So I, Seattle Pipe Club ended up on every one of our lists. So C did Corner C and D, one, C and D C was, and did. Yep, was out there pretty much. Yep, and uh, Rat the Rat Trace Rat Bag Trace. Piper Rat showed Trace. up quite a bit. Yep. So we all had a couple. Uh, so definitely right there, three companies that you could, you just can't go wrong with buying any one of their tobaccos. They're really strong companies. Uh, they've been around for decades. Well, and I told you that that Peter, I like the Peter Stokeby stuff too. Yeah, there's there's one called English Luxury. Yeah, that's a really good one too. Um, just a solid English blend, has a little bit of, of uh, flavoring added to mm -hmm. it, but um, it's so it's a it's an English aromatic. Yeah, yeah, but uh, real really really good too. So, so that's it for us. Uh, you have anything else you want to say? No, nope. um, you know it, it's difficult to say what. The next couple of episodes are going to look mm -hmm. like with all of this uh, stay-at-home stuff going on. Um, uh, I've bought several uh, different tobaccos for us to try, so I'm hoping that we can keep going. Yeah, yeah, and, and if anything, this. at least just be able to do maybe a, 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 a send-in information or something. You know, we'll we'll figure something out. We want to be able to still put out uh, content. Well, at least once a week. Anything that we can do to keep things normal mm -hmm. during these times, uh, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but most important, folks, is is that you're out there and you're and you're taking care of yourselves, taking care of your families, and absolutely being as safe as you possibly can. Um, that that's the most important thing. We've got <coughs> we've got family in Italy that are mm -hmm. are absolutely shut down right now they they cannot leave their homes uh, yeah. unless it's emergency situations yeah and so uh, we're hoping that that won't happen here but you never know yeah and so it's important that everyone take care of themselves absolutely on a good note though there have been uh, announcements by some of the leading pipe tobacco companies that we bought from like smoking pipes they're still delivering tobacco so yeah. you're still good you can still order well stuff. in the last week country squire has sent me stuff yeah uh, uh smoking pipes pipes and cigars yeah so you know the online part part of it is still working yes well and so we're thankful for that yep uh, uh hopefully we won't get into a situation where that won't won't happen so yeah hopefully that gives us a heads up even if it does that way we can stock up um, other than that, uh, we really appreciate y'all's comments. Uh, we want to give a big thank you out to Buddy Mac. He's the one who recommended that we do our top five listings. And uh, I got to say, this has been one of the most challenging episodes that we've done. But at the same time, I think this has been uh, great fun trying to just go through all of our tobaccos and really reach deep into our cellars of some of the ones that we haven't tried in a while or really love and the reason we haven't touched it is because of this or that or yeah so this was this was a really fun episode and if you guys have any more uh, comments just like that that you want us to do please leave them down in the comments sections below 
Um, please don't forget to subscribe and like our videos if you guys want to keep seeing great content come out. And uh, don't forget, make all your piping moments count. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. Take care. Stay safe.